on different paths. Uh, we are right now, as, as um, uh, Superintendent Miller talked about, you know, embarking on a, a complete redo of our riverfront um, in the upper riverfront. And we need to be talking to each other, working together all the time to understand what the financial challenges related to that new, these new uses that will happen. And when we go off in different directions, we don't do that. We don't communicate, and that is a real problem for us. So I, I think um, we have had um, several budgets, you know, where we've we have talked about our uh, uh, capacity as a city. Uh, we had a presentation from Mr. Ablin um, to the Board of Estimate and Taxation. I think to the Ways and Means Committee actually also, you know, about our net debt capacity, which is is very good news for us as a city. We have reduced our indebtedness since I came on the council by an, by an astounding number through very careful financial practices. Um, and we have some capacity to be able to meet the needs of this really critical uh, infrastructure within our city that people value so much. And so I, um, you know, Council Member Goodman and I have talked about this. Um, we, uh, we have a challenge in keeping our overall levy to a rate that keeps us in proportion to the neighborhoods and, and the cities that surround us, that's important. And so to me, the idea of having a 5% increase in our uh, uh, levy plus whatever the city's gonna do was just more than I, I could swallow. And so uh, I think this is a thoughtful way to look at how we meet the park's needs uh, across our city and in a way that is long-term and gives the park board assurance that, that we are serious about doing this, uh, and then gives our citizens some uh, sense that we are working together to, un to meet the unmet needs in our city. So I'll welcome my colleague, Councilmember Goodman, to comment, but that's, what, that's the impetus behind this. Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Council President Johnson. Uh, my heart is pounding a mile a minute, and I can't remember the last time I spoke on this dais where I was actually nervous. And I think I'm nervous because I am so passionate about the potential outcome. I have had the opportunity to work on multi-million dollar deals on behalf of the city. I've been involved in negotiating the theater buyout, the sale of five parking ramps for almost $100 million, the Target Center refinancing deal, the addition to the convention center, and numerous deals. But this one for me has the most historic significance because what it does is, it says that despite the fact that we have this odd form of shared governance, we actually are moving forward towards the same goal. As the kind of person who focuses on community and economic development, other than safety and public safety, the one thing that draws people to live in our city and bring jobs to our city is this incredible park system that we have and I don't need to tell my colleagues that because they already know that. And so I see this in many ways as a community and economic development issue, as well as a historic partnership to be able to work with the elected leaders at the park system to say your concerns actually are our concerns and we're not going to work the way the federal government is working or even this presidential campaign is going. We're going to work together uh, because we know what the common goals are. So when um, Jane, and I hope I can refer to you as Jane, we've been meeting for five months now, so I feel fi fairly confident referring to you by your first name. When Jane gave a presentation in front of the city council in October, I literally left the presentation and raced into Council President Johnson's office and said, are we gonna make the voters tell us to raise taxes? Or are we going to simply turn around and work out a deal with the park system that addresses a number of their critical issues in addition to the money related issue. And Barb said to me, well, I don't know. I don't know how they feel about a deal. I came subsequently to find that they didn't think we could get a deal passed. And so they didn't even ask. And we thought, well, we need to be sitting down together and figuring out if there is some meeting of the minds. And that's what we've done over the past five months. I will note that this was not in some veil of secrecy. A number of people on this panel knew we were doing this, including council members Glidden and Quincy, who said it would be great if you could work something out. And uh, we are trying to do just that. We are trying to show that the city's overall spending plan and taxing priority needs to be 
managed and governed. And that's what leadership is. Leadership is about making choices. And I really believe that after two years of work, study, community process, and community leadership, uh, the park system has proven there's a need. They have proven that the community is willing to stand up and ask us to resolve this issue. And we are obligated as leaders of the city to do so. I disagree with the idea of pass the buck, make them get a referendum, let the public tell them that they wanna increase taxes 5%. But when we need money for anything else, if people are freaked out about the overall tax burden, we'll just say, well, the public said they had to have 5%. And the public said yes on the schools and the public, but we threw, so, we threw sewers on the agenda and people are like, ah, we don't wanna pay for sewers. Someone has to be in charge of the overall tax levy and making choices. And this isn't just like an issue that came up three weeks ago and we sat down and pounded something out. As you can see through this resolution, there has been a lot of thoughtful negotiation. The mayor had suggested she was concerned with regard to giving them carte blanche with regard to attaching an increase to the overall growth of the tax base. We've addressed that issue. The park system, quite frankly, was panicked that we would pull the rug out from under them. This group of people probably won't be sitting here in year 18, and we wanna make sure that we have a, a process that's in place to guarantee that that funding is there for a longer period of time. So I'm proud of the work we've done. I hope everyone will find a way in the next few weeks to support the concept. The second process point of the process will be to figure out how we as a city council uh, will come up with the money that would be committed through the process. Council President Johnson and I are open to other suggestions. We've put forward with the help of the park system as well as staff from finance, the city coordinator's office and the city attorney's office, a suggestion, but our suggestion isn't the only suggestion. There are many opportunities for us to make this happen and I would urge us to do so because in the end, this will be a historic step forward for our city and we are obligated to show leadership and take it. So, um... <clears throat> thank you. And I want to say thank you, uh, Councilmember Goodman and Council President Johnson for taking a moment to kind of share your reflections and what were some of your intentions in trying to come up with a proposal that could be presented to the city council to try to see, do we have a meeting of the minds on how to address uh, 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 significant needs in our Minneapolis park system. Just one more, I, I wanted to just ask another question. There is a lineup of people with questions here, um, but uh, Councilmember Goodman kind of alluded to the fact that uh, there, uh, she and uh, Council President Johnson may have had a, an idea or a framework that they have worked through initially with, you know, how do you fund the numbers that are in this proposal. And uh, my understanding, and I could be wrong, was that staff wasn't coming here prepared to present anything on a framework. And uh, so I wanted to know if, again, this is just to ground us, uh, either of you would like to share anything about uh, how did you uh, identify how this would be the number? And I'm assuming, of course, that people will have some questions, but we're going to refer this to Ways and Means and other places where we traditionally have deeper dives into uh, how to finance ideas, what are our financial policies and all those things. Council President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, looking at the city's budget, and unfortunately we don't have our uh, last quarter um, results uh, yet, uh, the, the performance um, of the city's funds for the last year. Um, for 15, um, but I guess we're gonna get that in the next cycle or finance is working on that right now. But I mean, I have I have sat through uh, 18 budgets here and uh, I think uh, when we look at how we have considered our uh, obligations going forward um, under current state law, we have uh, room to look for this $8 million of capital that we will need to come up with. Uh, there are, there are uh, every year calculations about what our uh, general fund uh, balance needs to be uh, with regard to our operating 
uh, budget. Uh, the bond houses tell us we need 17% of our operating budget for the next year in reserve in our general fund reserve. Uh, we've always maintained that. We've upped it as they've asked us to up it. Uh, this, this city is uh, financially extremely well managed and I thank our finance staff for the, the great work that they've done. Uh, but uh, in uh, the size of the budget that the city has, uh, we have a number of obligations um, and a number of revenues that we count that are uh, not always, um, what would you call it, um, under current state law, we're, we're getting a certain number, uh, dollar amount of local government aid. We hope that that number continues. Sometimes it doesn't, and that has gotten us in to some of the budget challenges that we've had over the years. Um, we have had workout plans for our internal service funds that we used to get us out of the deep debt uh, that we were in when Councilmember Goodman and I first came to office. We, we developed a workout plan that pledged money to, to buy down that debt, and we are, we are through with that buy down of the debt. Mr. Ablin made the great presentation. Right now, our uh, net debt bonds, we are out 2.2 years on average with our net debt bonds. That means that we're practically paying cash for our capital expenditures, which is great, great news, great news. Council Member Goodman has worked very, very hard on uh, um, getting us out of the percentage of our tax base that is in tax increment districts. And I forget the exact percentage, she could tell you because she's worked really hard on this. So I think we need to take advantage of the flexibility that we have within our existing resources, look for these dollars, prioritize these dollars. As Councilmember Goodman said, it's all a matter of choices. And we can choose to sell bonds if that makes sense in this low interest environment, it makes sense to sell bonds. So I think we have an, uh, an obligation as a city uh, through our existing work you know, in our committees to look very deeply at our budget and understand where the dollars are located and then again, make these choices and prioritize um, in, in our opinion, this park need. Okay, so I think just at the end of our time together, I will probably make a motion and uh, that requests a presentation, an initial presentation be prepared for the Ways and Means Committee that um, at least gets us started on that conversation because okay. I think we need to have some public conversation yep. about um, how would we be able to source this and sure. that's where the dialogue is going to come from. So. Um, and, and I will just note too, so we had staff come prepared to, uh, and I think we still might do this, I think we wanna take questions, there are several questions here, there may be others that are more about what was presented. And then our staff was prepared to uh, present some background information that helps us understand the park board's initial proposals. I think that still might be valuable information because we haven't heard that. Uh, before and we'll kind of take the temperature of how much time we have those uh, and we can post those prepared presentations online uh, in the case that we're not able to get to them. One was a uh, city attorney presentation on the park board's proposals relating to referendum and charter change. And the second one was a general uh, finance presentation, again, more looking at the park board's original proposal. So Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I had a clarifying question about the difference between the two proposals. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood that in the original referendum proposal, there was a, what was the total ask for capital versus operating, and then does that include or not include the 2.5 million that normally comes through our click process? And then versus the so uh, the the, the total the ask, money. yeah, Councilmember uh, Bender, let me know if I don't answer your question, okay, or if I miss some a part of it. Um, our original uh, proposal that our board approved for ballot language was a 0.0388 percent increase, which equates to about 15 million dollars, and that it covers both operating as well as capital. It does not include, it, it covers both the operating gap that we have as well as the capital gap we have. And did that, is that in addition to the 2.5 million? That's in addition to the 2.5 million that so we get. So the total roughly is 17.5 if you're making an apples to apples comparison versus the 13.5 Correct. commitment. One, one uh, council member uh, Bender, one thing I'd like to clarify is that uh, in this past year, Click made a recommendation to reduce our our net debt bonding money. So 
I, uh, we're not, and we had conversations with the mayor and, and Council President Johnson about that very issue that um, we weren't going to challenge because it's in the out years. It actually starts in 2018. So um, we are, while our proposal for a ballot initiative um, is of the 15 million, we're not confident that the net debt bonding of 2.5 is still there. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And then just, um, uh, Madam Chair, I, I actually would appreciate the financial information. Um, I have a number of questions about funding sources and what the annual increased levy is imagined to be for the park funding, as well as our streets funding that we had a presentation about at TPW um, a couple of cycles ago. I guess I just wanted to comment too that from my perspective, I think there's a compelling case for the needs for capital and operating expenses in our parks. When we do our annual budgeting, we set a levy, and then we match that to spending in a, you know, in accordance with our priorities. And we give our constituents months to give us feedback about the proposed budget and the proposed levy. And we're able to make those difficult decisions about how much funding do we give to our parks versus our roads versus our police versus our fire. It is not typical for us to have a set aside amount in our budget for a specific item that we have committed to in law. We don't have that for police or fire or streets, for example. And so a lot of my questions about the financial piece has to do with those inevitable trade-offs of either having to raise taxes in order to pay for this, this additional spending or to cut spending. And we're doing this outside of our normal budget process so we aren't able to make those clear and transparent decisions about what we might be cutting or what property taxes our constituents might be expected to pay. So I have a lot of questions about what we might imagine that those decisions to look like in December of this year. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much. So I'm curious about when we're expecting the park board to act on this resolution. Uh, Councilmember Gordon, we are actually gonna be presenting to this to our board this evening um, and asking them to vote on it. Um, I can't speak to our, whether our board's gonna vote on it this evening, but it is being presented them to this evening as an action item. Okay, I appreciate that. And um, the uh, the opportunity for us to amend it or change it, or the, is there any flexibility with this? I mean, if the park board wants to, to change it or amend it, then we'll see something different coming back from them. And I'm just wondering how much you're counting on us not to tinker with anything. Uh, Council Member um, Gordon, I think Council Member Goodman said she was looking for feedback and input. Um, I will be curious, the conversation we had this evening with our board, if they want to tinker with it or offer some alternative suggestions. Um, so I think it, it will be told by what our board does this evening and feedback that I get. Um, and Council Member Goodman has asked for uh, any thoughts or suggestions from you, you, her colleagues as well. Okay, so I appreciate that. I, um, you know, the part that um, makes me the most nervous is the 10.5 million per year. It's in part five because it doesn't say where that funding's coming from. Um, I was open and am open to the possibility of a referendum. Uh, that I think makes things really clear as well. Although we've proven that as a city with the help from the state, we can work our way around referendums that, that tell us what to do as well. So. But I'm also concerned about this because I think this would be something we can work around and there is a big escape clause in there too. Um, I really appreciate all the work that's gone into it though and I'm open to an agreement without a referendum. I also see a referendum as a lot more work for the park board, for advocates, for everybody. Um, and there's other things I'm sure people wanna focus on during an election cycle and, and all of that. So uh, it's, I, I don't wanna be, um, overly negative or overly positive either, because I think seeing the city work well with the parks is really critical and the parks are such a resource um, that I think we all feel a sense of responsibility and obligation there. Um, it's, it's just challenging to think about where does that 10.5 come from? I could imagine that we're gonna have to increase the levy um, to come up with some of that, even if perhaps, or, or take on more debt um, then people should always be worried about what aren't we gonna be able to pay for because we're doing this. This actually makes me think of that great opportunity that we had with our sales tax um, that we had authority for that now is gonna be all tied up in another project we decided to fund. Um, the, the 
maybe isn't as, in my opinion, uh, worthy as the, the park. So I'll be curious to find out um, what are the options and what are the alternatives for that 10.5. That's a big commitment. That's a big commitment we're going to be making on future councils that might mean other things don't happen. We have bridges, we have roads, we have streets, we have police departments, we have fire departments, we have needs, we have buildings that are outdated, we have capital needs too, so this is a challenge. I'd feel better if I knew where that funding was coming from and what that would actually mean to those other needs and balancing that out. So that's something I'm going to be curious about and looking for uh, in, the, in the next couple weeks ahead because I understand we're not making a decision on this now, but we might be asked to take a vote on it two weeks from today. And maybe that's a question for the council vice president or anybody. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, council member Palmasano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about the referendum and then this other option. Um, I know and I, I think we all agree that our park system is one of our best assets. It's why I chose to stay here and to raise a family after I was relocated many years ago. And, and yet when I saw the uh, original proposals, the original resolutions from the park board on a $300 million, 200 20 year referendum, um, it gave me probably the same heart attack that Lisa Goodman experienced. Um, there's huge implications for taxpayers and for the city enterprise as a whole with a referendum. Um, with 20 years and the resolution that was taken at the park board level, um, lots of things can change. As our mayor said when she vetoed it, lots of things can change. Uh, it, it's, it's locked, it's an enshrined amount of money and there's very little accountability. And that's not to say anything that there is um, mistrust of the people that are trying to govern this, um, the, park, the park board commissioners, but it is easy for referenda not to be spent as campaigned. Um, for example, Stillwater was in the Star Tribune for a number of weeks on how there was a large school board referendum for the Stillwater schools and people um, actively went and actively campaigned for it, assuming that their elementary schools wouldn't close and then they found themselves in this situation that they closed a lot of schools. So without any malintent, it is very easy for referenda to not be spent as planned or, or as committed to through a campaign. Um, Currently, the park board gets 18.3% of our levy, of our city's levy, plus local government aid, and then plus this referendum on top of it. Um, I, to me, that was cause for pause. Um, I, I try to stay cognizant of the total picture of taxpayers, and this is something, this alternative, this alternative resolution is something that looks out for them. I still have concerns. I have concerns, can our park board spend it? You know, I see $7.7 .7 million sitting in click that should have been spent on other city priorities and other city projects. Um, I have, I too have concerns about school referenda, about our aging infrastructure. Um, it, it, a referendum bypasses our city's ability to account for all things, and it gives zero commitment to our neighborhood parks instead of the shifting of money that I've seen over the past few years to try and deal with other needs that are pressing needs in our park system, but other needs like golf courses in other cities. Um, I feel strongly that a referendum or an alternative will either get us further apart as a city and a park board, or it will get us closer together. And I choose that closer together option. 99.04% um, of the budget asks from our park board over the last 15 years have been approved. To me, that shows a good working relationship, something that we can agree on. Sometimes that wasn't from a mayor's budget that was corrected by the Board of Estimate and Taxation. Sometimes the council took it out and other people put it back in. But um, to me, that's the right way to do it. And what I appreciate about all the closing the gap body of work that has happened is that they've finally been able to articulate their real need uh, better than a lot of our city departments can help articulate their real need and their real value to the organization. And I, I, I disagree with the idea that we should take the politically popular parts of our whole city and put them up for a referendum vote because that really does a disservice to other parts of our city that are more difficult to, um, to explain, to directly appreciate. Um, a referendum might be perhaps politically expedient. It would be nice to say, oh, I didn't raise taxes, but I really think it would be unwise. It really doesn't look out for the total tax picture. So 
um, I really appreciate here that we've worked together. Uh, you know, Brad Bourne, who's my Parks Commissioner for the whole 13th Ward, he was right in saying we should first ask the city for how much the parks really need. Uh, and he was right there when I wanted to poke a thousand holes in this referendum. And he sat for hours and he, we sat and we talked about it. Um, I don't think that every detail in this is necessarily worked out. Um, I still have concerns over whether the park system can spend it. Uh, but this resolution, this, this work effort that um, I've been a part of in small ways addresses a lot of them. And ultimately, I think it's important that we have the same CFO and we should be able to be able to work together and to look at the bigger picture here. So that there's no direct questions in this, but just a, a comment on this huge effort um, to say I'm supportive of alternatives to a referendum. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Palmasano. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I want to thank the authors and everyone involved for bringing forward this uh, draft resolution. And I look forward to the details coming out around funding in our Ways and Means Committee. But I have to say, I'm really excited about this overall. I think that, you know, when we know that there's a need in our parks, as uh, my commissioner, Stephanie Musich, can attest to, uh, <laughs> when we have tennis courts that they need to send people out to weed whack, no joke, uh, when we have ceiling tiles falling uh, down in our parks buildings, uh, we have a clear need here. We have a world-class park system. And frankly, I think a lot of that, we're coasting on past investments that were made by the generations that come before us. And I'm looking forward to the investments that we can make in our park system that will be valued and appreciated and used uh, and that the generations ahead of us will have gratitude for. Um, I also recognize the needs around our roads and our other uh, infrastructure of public safety. You know, I'm not trying to solve every problem at once. I think it's hard to do that. And I think that we absolutely have a role in working on our road infrastructure during the upcoming budget process. But we know that if this went out uh, on the ballot, that the voters would support it because our parks are so important to all of us. And I wanna recognize that this is ultimately less money than the park board would receive if it went out onto the ballot. So in the grand scheme of things, in terms of roads, in terms of public safety, this is actually a step towards being able to provide more funding for those, uh, for those important needs as well in our city. And uh, I don't wanna rag on it too much, but uh, I also note this week we had go through and it's up on our, uh, on our agenda for Friday, a $130 million renovation of the Target Center, which would extend its life for 10 years. And I personally think that our parks are a far more important investment to make. And uh, ultimately at the end of the day, I, I think that if anything, it's the Target Center that should be out on uh, the ballot for a referendum. <laughs> so, not our parks and i just want to acknowledge that uh and so i am very excited about this again thanks to everyone involved with it uh our parks absolutely need this and you know politically it might be easier if it was on the ballot because then uh when you know we go out there in front of voters it's easy to say hey i didn't support this tax increase the voters did they did it i didn't take a hard vote uh to raise taxes at the end of the day but I, I think that's not why we're here, is to avoid those issues. We're here to step up and show that leadership and say this is a need, we recognize it, and we're going to do this. And at the end of the day, the residents of Minneapolis, I believe, will recognize the wisdom in coming together, compromising, and ultimately funding our parks the way that really reflects the value of the people of Minneapolis. And finally, I just wanna uh, bring forward a constituent question or more of a concern and this is something I figure will work out in the details. They uh, had emailed me saying that they absolutely love the parks on the south side. I love the parks on the south side as well. They spend though so much time in Northeast Minneapolis specifically, and they feel that there is a difference in the investments uh, between the parks on the south side and in Northeast. And they wanted to see uh, the neighborhoods that have the greatest need receive the lion's share of those funds, of those investments so that we can have strong parks in every single quadrant of our city. 
that are equitable for all of our residents. And so uh, if you have any response to that, uh, Superintendent Miller, around how we can equitably uh, source this money or invest this money, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, Council Member Johnson, first of all, thank you for uh... Your comments and, and in response to your question, uh, equity is really an important issue at the Park Board as well. And um, as I mentioned, I will be presenting to the board uh, in April a, a proposed or draft capital and rehab plan for the first five years. And I talked about it as being based on a criteria-based uh, matrix. And we are still working through that, but let me give you, I can give everyone a sense of what those criteria are gonna be looking at. They're gonna be looking at areas of concentrated poverty within the city. They're going to be looking at uh, areas <coughs> of higher proportion of people of color, going to be looking at population density. They're going to be looking at the youth population. Again, all of these are relative to the neighborhood parks. Historical capital investment, if you look at the value of the assets in a park, what has been a proportionality of spending within each of those neighborhood parks. We're also gonna be looking at safety in that neighborhood and crime. Um, and then obviously the asset, the longevity of the assets, the condition of the assets, um, as well as uh, being in compliance or implementing uh, improvements that address ADA compliance. Thank you, I appreciate that. And again, thanks to everyone involved with bringing this forward. And thanks to everyone who showed up today as well in support of our parks. For each one of you that's here, I know there are hundreds more uh, at home that are probably not even aware of the meeting today, but if they were, uh, they would be out here as well because they value our parks so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Council Member Fry. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, my presence in the city right now is in no small part, a product of our beautiful park system. Uh, in 2006, I ran the Twin Cities Marathon. Uh, it spans a series <coughs> of lakes. It goes through a, a ton of different parks in, in South Minneapolis, and I quite frankly found it beautiful. And, I, and this is this is a dead-on true story. At somewhere around the 10-mile mark or so, uh, my friend Scott DeFilippis turned to me and he said, "This is a beautiful city." That's an exact quote, uh, and I you know I couldn't agree more. Uh, now, thankfully, uh, the Twin Cities Marathon runs predominantly through the parks in South Minneapolis and not necessarily in North Minneapolis or Northeast, which certainly need uh, some more funding as well. But I know that uh, Jane is, is working on that extensively right now. And secondly, this is, this is an equity issue. There are studies that prove, that definitively show that you can predict the likelihood of having a heart attack by the age of 60 or your your earning power throughout your life based on the proximity that you are to green space, and not just any green space, green space that is well kept, uh, that is is taken care of, and that people feel comfortable and safe in. Uh, and so ensuring that we have parks throughout the entire city that are well funded, I think is critical to this. Uh, and then finally, the um, I'm going to make an argument as to as that many of others have, have already made as to why the the referendum, which is quite a blunt instrument, especially at a definitive fifteen million dollar figure that's tied to inflation, that is tied to a percentage of market share for the entire city, is not necessarily as good as forming an agreement. Now, I and I know many others were not, but I was actually more amenable to a referendum because I saw this as such an important concept that we needed to tackle immediately. Uh, but I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the work of council members uh, Johnson and Goodman, uh, as well as our park board, Ms. Miller, uh, that have, that has gone into this. Um, we've got, I mean, one, it, it's just less money, $4 million less um, out of the city coffers. Um, two, as I stated earlier, it's not a blunt instrument. Uh, and three, we have exigent factors that give us an out if and when we need it. Uh, so I think the agreement is it works, uh, it's functional, and um, I'm really thankful for the work that went into this. Thank you, Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm under, I wondered if we might have um, some questions for finance related to the costs of this proposal. Um, so I had questions about what we might estimate to be the annual levy increase for this, I guess it would be this new proposal, which is $13.5 million annually. So the resolution itself commits us to a 1% levy increase. 
but then I think it would be helpful to understand what's the capital cost. And I, I might say, I, I know that there had been a couple of requests to make sure that we did the finance presentation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you think that would be helpful in answering Councilmember Bender's question. I just, I know you, Ms. Christensen, so I know that you often go through big presentations <laughs> briefly, so I just wanna let people know the length probably depends on how many questions council members have, mm -hmm. and, and but uh, why don't you answer a question, but if it would help you to do your presentation as you had set up, that's, that's fine too. Um, Vice President Glidden, Council Member Bender, I was just going to suggest that it, that if I briefly go through the 14 slides that I've got, Why don't you do that, might then? actually answer some of your let's, questions. Let's do that now. Okay. All right, uh, I apologize that some of the information that will be in this pre presentation is um, now a little bit stale given the new information uh, uh, with the proposed resolution today. Uh, however, much of the information that was prepared uh, to talk about the impact of the proposed uh, referendum is still applicable to the proposal that was um, brought before us today. Uh, we need an agenda. So as a reminder to uh, members of the council, uh, the overall budget for the city and the park board as well as all of our um, operations is funded from a variety of sources. Uh, the property tax levy is a significant piece of the overall funding picture for the city. The city's got a budget of about $1.3 billion. We've got a property tax levy of about 300 million. You'll see per the uh, slide in front of you, there's a lot of other places where the money comes from. The biggest factor uh, are the charges, sales fees and permits. And those charges are largely associated with the regular utility bills that are paid by the residents and businesses in the city. So just to give you a little bit of context about uh, the overall big financial picture comes from a lot of places. It's also important to note that we are dependent to some degree on the state of Minnesota for the uh, provision of local government aid or LGA, which supplements our levy for funding for both the city's operations as well as parks. As Superintendent Miller mentioned earlier, there is an agreement between the park board and the city to share in the provision of LGA. So again, when, uh, when we take a hit, the park board takes a hit. It's a proportional sharing. And the uh, slide that you see before you shows that particularly in the years 2009 through uh, 2014 that there's this inverse relationship between the years in which the LGA was cut or unallotted and our need to backfill uh, with property taxes just to, main, to retain and um, provide the same level of services. So a little more context. This slide shows overall the uh, property tax levy for the various functions and the various uses within the city from 2010 to 2016. The um, city's general fund, which is the blue section on the bottom, you'll see that there's been, uh, with the increases in LGA and growth in the other non-property uh, tax revenues, that the city's overall levy for its general fund has actually decreased over time. The next section that you see on this slide is the uh, kind of yucky green color that um, is re reflective of the uh, amount of levy support that has been provided uh, by the city uh, to the park board um, over that same period of time. So you see that the funding level for the uh, property tax levy has been um, maintained relatively stable for those years. So how else do we pay for uh, activities in the city's general fund? Uh, we've got the non-tax resources, sometimes we use some uh, fund balance as the council president Johnson indicated that we've uh, been the beneficiaries of some very good economic times in the past couple years, which uh, does provide us with some uh, resources that we can use on a one-time basis, generally not a recurring uh, revenue source. And you'll see um, reflected that in this chart as well, that uh, we have projected some growth in the need for property tax increases in the city's general fund. This is part of what we call the five-year financial direction, which gives us uh, a view into uh, what our future needs may be, which we generally will take into consideration when we're making some of these bigger decisions. What, if, what happens with what we do today? How does that impact the future? 
And then to go back to a higher level, we can see that the city's general fund uh, is projecting growth. There's also a projection of growth for the uh, park levy um, of about 4% ongoing. Uh, 